Texas Governor Rick Perry is the political centerfold for some of America's hardcore conservatives. Mixing politics with code terms to emphasize his Christian views, he preaches less government, less taxes, and advocates policies near and dear to the hearts of the ultra-conservative political right. But others might see Rick Perry as a lapdog, a stooge, a callboy for global big business and the atheist communist dictatorship known as the People's Republic of China. There's a reason the Chinese government-owned Tianjin Pipe Group built a $1 billion oil pipe factory in Corpus Christi, Texas. There's a reason the Sovereign Wealth Fund of China, the communist government's vehicle for foreign business deals, has invested more money in Texas than any other state in the U.S. Governor Perry's actions hardly align with his political rhetoric. What he says and what he does are two different things. Perry was the prime mover behind the Trans-Texas Corridor, which was to be the first phase of the NASCO North American Super Corridor, commonly known as the NAFTA Superhighway. Texans by the thousands vehemently oppose the Trans-Texas Corridor. Taking family farms isn't family values. Rick, keep your hands off our land. Perry's answer to the opposition was to threaten to use the state's power of eminent domain to confiscate thousands of acres of private farm and ranch land to clear a path for roads, rails, and pipelines. The Trans-Texas Corridor would be four football fields wide to accelerate the flow of job-killing imports and to enable a communist country to get richer on the backs of Americans. Governor Perry's threat to use eminent domain to confiscate private property would be a bold abuse of the power of big government the kind of big government he now claims he opposes. No liberal politician has ever proposed a government confiscation of American private property on the scale threatened by Texas Governor Rick Perry. The Trans-Texas Corridor Project collapsed in 2009 in the face of the heavy public opposition, but it may not be dead. A more likely scenario is that it is dormant, awaiting a new name and a new opportunity to rise again. China is desperate for oil more desperate than the United States. Flashback to California in March 2005. Sinuk, the government-owned Chinese National Offshore Oil Corporation, tried to buy Unical, Union Oil of California. The outcry in Washington was swift and loud. That was then. This is now. Late last year, China's Sinuk announced it had partnered with Chesapeake Energy Corporation of Oklahoma and paid a couple of billion dollars to acquire a share of the mineral rights to 600,000 acres of land in Texas for what is called the Eagle Ford oil shale play. Shale oil is the latest hot pursuit in the global energy business. Communist China now owns a stake in a potentially vast pool of shale oil beneath the land of Texas. It ties in nicely with the giant Chinese oil pipe factory in Corpus Christi, Texas, mentioned earlier. Governor Rick Perry had nothing to say about the Sinuk, Texas deal, the same Chinese government company bitterly opposed by our nation's politicians in 2005. If you'd like to see how China is infiltrating our national electric grid as well, you might want to watch the YouTube video, U.S. Governors, the Great American Sellout. In addition to buying up our natural resources and our utilities, Beijing is relentlessly trying to enter the U.S. telecommunications industry. If China's hackers can infiltrate our national telephone and data networks through spy-enabled equipment, it would be the holy grail of espionage against the United States. Two giant Chinese telecom companies, Huawei and ZTE, have been relentless in their efforts to sell their equipment to the U.S. phone and data grid. Huawei and ZTE have been cited numerous times by our national security experts and intelligence services around the world as suspected espionage fronts for China's People's Liberation Army. It's a charge both companies routinely deny. It would be news if they admitted it. Huawei and ZTE have chosen to establish their U.S. headquarters in Texas. For those who may think this commentary is picking on poor Rick Perry, take note. Washington lobbyist Dick Gephardt, former Democratic House Majority Leader and former Democratic presidential candidate, joined the board of a U.S. company, which appears to have been formed primarily to help Huawei infiltrate the U.S. telecommunications grid. Gephardt has declined to comment on lobbying in behalf of Huawei. Americans who see politics through a partisan lens need to understand the People's Republic of China cultivates agents of influence on both ends of the U.S. political spectrum and in the middle, too. U.S. national security watchdogs, including congressional Republicans, have fought repeatedly to block Huawei's attempts to worm its way into our telecommunications grid. Yet, last October, 
Governor Perry presided over ribbon-cutting ceremonies for Huawei's new U.S. headquarters in Plano, Texas. As he welcomed the American expansion of the suspected Chinese espionage front company, Rick Perry said this. This is a company with a really strong worldwide reputation. In a way, Governor Perry is right. Huawei does have a strong reputation of sorts. During the Clinton presidency, companies such as AT&T, IBM, Hewlett-Packard, Motorola, and others, all eager to cash in on the rapid rise of China, were given the green light to sell fiber optic and digital networking technology to Huawei. Huawei, in turn, sold fiber optic network systems to Saddam Hussein for his air defenses. The anti-aircraft missile control network Huawei sold to Iraq put U.S. pilots in harm's way. This is a company with a really strong worldwide reputation. The Intelligence Bureau of India has accused Huawei employees in that country of involvement in espionage and of selling telecommunications spy gear to the Taliban. This is a company with a really strong worldwide reputation. Australian employees of Huawei complained that some of the Chinese employees of Huawei Australia are undercover soldiers in the People's Liberation Army. This is a company with a really strong worldwide reputation. In 2009, a top British intelligence officer warned government ministers in the UK that a decision to allow British Telecom to buy networking gear from Huawei carried significant risks. Why is gear from Huawei a risk? Because, the security expert said, British intelligence has only limited understanding of our adversary's attack capability. This is a company with a really strong worldwide reputation. Huawei makes no secret of its deep involvement in the telecom networks of Iran. And it's a fact that data and fiber optic networks are vital to Iran's air defenses, to the development of nuclear weapons, and essential for the missiles to launch them. This press release from the Chinese embassy in Tehran in August 2009 is headlined, Huawei plans takeover of Iran's telecom market. This is a company with a really strong worldwide reputation. The Chinese communists could not ask for a better ally in American politics than Texas Governor Rick Perry. The culture of Texas includes an abiding respect bordering on reverence for the Battle of the Alamo in 1836. Less than 200 Texans, facing an overwhelming enemy and certain death, fought for several days before being slaughtered by the Mexican army of General Antonio Lopez de Santa Anna. The bravery and courage shown at the Alamo galvanized the Texas Revolution for independence from Mexico. If the Battle of the Alamo was to be fought today and China was the advancing enemy, what would Rick Perry do? I'm Vince Wade.